Hi everyone. On behalf of ET government, I welcome Mr. Kuladhar Saikia, our esteemed guest for this week's Chai Pe Charcha. Sir, it is indeed a great pleasure to meet you and have you in today's show. I'm T. Radhakrishnan. Good afternoon, afternoon Radhakrishnan. Go ahead. Dear friends, Chai Pe Charcha is an interactive program with the bureaucrats and high achievers in diverse fields. The high impact live video show highlights the journey into professional life and likes and dislikes in their care, apart from their contribution towards the society and national building. Each week, we present a new guest and discuss interesting topics that matter. I also welcome our viewers. In this ongoing show, we interact with our guest, Mr. Kuladhar Sekia, a 1985 batch IPS officer of Assam cadre, who retired as Director General of Police of Assam State in 2019. He is a full bright scholar in community leaders, leadership from Pennsylvania State University, USA, winner of several literacy awards, including Sahitya Academy Award and the recipient of a doctorate in crime and development from Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, and also worked as a consultant at the World Bank, Washington, DC. Sir, I once again welcome you to ET Government Chai Pe Charcha. Thank you, Radha Krishna. An announcement for viewers. In India, right now, our health workers are on the front lines of battling the novel coronavirus disease that's spreading throughout our cities, states, nation. They are putting themselves in the path of this virus in Delhi, Bangalore, and around the world in this unprecedented crisis. Our doctors, nurses, technicians, and everyone who supports patient care are rising to the occasion, caring for our most vulnerable populations. Our prayers and best wishes are with you to express your ap appreciation and gratitude for our these heroes. Visit ET Garments, our social media channels to share encouraging words like artwork, thank you notes. Sir, any message for our health workers from you? Okay, uh, well, good afternoon, Radha Krishna. It's a wonderful meeting, but uh, as you said, we are meeting in such a time when uh, we have the, you know, the um, scenario which is not very healthy and not very palatable and very, very challenging for us, particularly the health workers and uh, general line workers. I must uh, uh, tell them thanks on behalf of everyone because they are they the people who are working so well 24-7. Uh, and day and night, and they are really in the service of humanity. So we are all with them, and we do uh, assure ourselves that we will follow the, you know, the protocol required for COVID-19. All right. Thank you, thank you, sir. Sir, how are you feeling? Everything is fine with you. Yeah, yeah, everything is all right. Yeah, good. Though, uh, you know, everywhere there is a, you know, the, the spread of the disease in different areas in my state. But uh, generally, I'm keeping fine and well and, you know, Thank you. taking all the precautions required. Good, mm -hmm. good. Sir, Assam is known for Assam tea, Assam silk. Mm -hmm. The state was the first site for oil drilling in Asia. The Assamese economy is aided by wildlife tourism. Assam receives more rainfall than most parts of India. This rain feeds the Brahmaputra River whose tributaries and Oxbow lakes provide the region with the hydro geomorphic environment. I just would like to know from you, Assam is a very important state in the country. I noticed that many bright students are coming out of the state. How do you see this as of the parents, the children, 
in terms of their education, career prospects. So in your view, what better things can be done for Assam? OK, it's a very interesting issue you have raised because uh, all of us know the enormous natural resources in our place, in that not only in terms of oil or coal or you know the natural uh, cultivation like plantation agriculture, like tea and things like that. Uh, we do have the mighty Brahmaputra River, and which is you know more of a lifeline for us. You know the entire Brahmaputra civilization sprang up. You know in, the, in both the banks of Brahmaputra. So it plays a very important role, and uh, 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 given that uh, we have seen that these are only what you can see, but there is something more to it that we have multiple ethnic groups. You know, we are living together wonderfully, and when even if there is some conflict times, but generally we all are living at you know in a very uh, cordial manner and. Uh, um, because of that, this is a resource for us, you know, the ethnicity, the multiple, the variations in our uh, population and things like that. So uh, over time, the, pro the issue we have been uh, raising about, you know, a lot of students going out for education, searching for jobs and things like that. <coughs> Sorry. In this case, we must remember one thing, the small, small ethnic groups have now started understanding, started defining themselves and the middle uh, classes are developing. And so there the education has reached out to them. And because of all these, those people are also coming out and they're also going out for better education, better facilities of jobs and things like that. So this is, uh, I think it's a good thing because uh, uh, you know, because of the communication uh, scenario has improved over time. So you you have a lot of flight connections, then uh, railways, then you know all sorts of communication facilities have improved. Because of that, people started moving out from this state to other places to in in uh, for for jobs, education, etc. When we went to Delhi in, uh, to study in 1976 my undergraduation at university, then hardly few of us had uh, gone out to study in the university. Now today, hundreds of students go out, they do uh, their jobs there. It's a good thing, I think, good mobility and, in, uh, you know, sort of inclusiveness. Uh, we are, uh, you know, making this country uh, connected through different, you know, lifelines and things like that. I think it's a good thing. But this little point I want to raise that we have a lot of economic opportunities untapped and unexplored in my areas. Uh, maybe because of the, um, you know, the type of natural uh, resources we have. So we have to deal with that. We have to see that those are tapped, explored, and the local youth do get the opportunities in that as well. So job creation and things like that are very important parameters in this case. Just for our audience benefit, uh, Mr. Kuladhar Sekia had his graduation from Ramjas College, Delhi University in economics and post-graduation from the Delhi School of Economics. He had a brief stint of teaching experience of economics at the Hindu College, Delhi University. Apart from being a law graduate, he is a PhD in economics from IIT Guwahati. Sir, in your career, you worked as an officer of Indian Economic Service in the Planning Commission, New Delhi, and also as Indian Railway Traffic Service Officer, IRTS, for a short while before joining the Indian Police Service in 1985. Looks you had a strong aspiration for IPS. So you did not give up till you achieved, and you have you have covered most of the UPSC. And <laughs> is there any? <laughs> I just want to know yeah. what inspiration yeah. behind you studying many 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 courses and been trying for IPS. 
no actually um, well i even in when i joined uh, as a teacher in the university college uh, you know there also i was uh, you know working in one particular college for two three months then get a better opportunity in some different college so i used to, i joined in that so there are some changes but uh, in an economic service i appeared because uh, economics was my you know very uh, important and very uh, a subject which is very close to my heart even today as you see in like 2016-17 i did my phd in economics from it was because my love for economics so i knew that even if i quit economics as a career i can still follow it up so after that i appeared in civil services exams immediately after joining economic service i got into uh, ips in the rank and all almost in that rank so i didn't actually i did not write ips as my option initially i so it's not that i did not stop because i you know till i get uh, got ips but uh, okay it, uh, i was destined to be a police officer i have joined and i really enjoyed the service in the sense that you can be so close to the people you can be you know a lot many times you determine the you know um, how people will live in peace and tranquility so also i think uh, I, i i did enjoy my police service all throughout okay just for our audience uh, mr kulhadar ji is a recipient of president uh, police medal two times sir congratulations uh, on behalf of our viewers sir you also taught for a brief period at hindu college uh, delhi university i know that you also visit, uh, visiting faculty teaching faculty at many iims uh, national institutions you also worked as a consultant at the world bank washington dc I mean what inspiration you take from these classes or uh, i mean i mean what are the, your interesting areas that you know you will take inspiration from the students see uh, radak sir it's a very interesting question to be asked in such a platform because i i really enjoyed um, been teaching because you know see if you attend the classes of the young students you always learn so much from them in fact uh, say i have been teaching uh, in very big corporate uh, officials ceos in indian school of business hyderabad then yeah i have taken a few number of classes at i am ahmedabad i am lucknow and you know all sorts of things then in ca that singapore uh, management where i have been teaching innovations and uh, social entrepreneurship now uh, all these uh, series i uh, last uh, two uh, i think two years back i was teaching behavioral economics and uh, i am uh, lucknow so these these uh, places uh, give me a lot of opportunities to meet uh, people from different backgrounds their innovative minds their you know to my i can keep pace with uh, the young generation who can teach you so much you know they are so intelligent so brilliant and uh, they will keep you going so i've been uh, really enjoying such uh, occasions and i do go now again now because of these pandemics i i take a lot of such classes uh through uh webinars and you know internet but it's i think uh, every civil servant whoever wants to be you know in touch with them with their um, you know psychological and intellectual development i think this is good avenue for everyone of us to learn and evolve as an officer and your assignment with the world bank uh, washington dc okay uh, it was uh, you know during my time at uh, uh, us when i was doing my uh, you know full by scholarship full by fellowship in uh, basically uh, within that period i was working as a consultant to world bank and i was doing a project on how community uh, can do uh, can uh, uh, do a lot of things in their areas themselves you know and there 
how a change agent can bring different changes in the community. Now, um, so basically I was talking about change agent led growth and development. So we, when we join as a civil servant in our field and in different uh, postings, so we realized that basically we can take ourselves as a change agent. Even as a law enforcer, you are a change agent because, you know, um, if you allow a lot of things to be uh, the way the society wants in a proper legal, you know, uh, law, uh, order, tranquility, and things like that. So that there you act, you can act as a change agent. So uh, the project I had taken up in World Bank at that time uh, was on that community development change agent and things like that you know? okay so dear viewers you can talk to our guest today by sending a questions using the social media channels on et government and sir you are also a well known as a short story writer and a winner of a prestigious literacy award of india sahitya academy award for 19 2015 you received katha award in 2000 for your fiction you are all you are all being invited as a panel panelist to a number of literary festivals in the country you represent india in london book fair as a speaker your short, your short stories have been translated into various indian languages including hindi english and published in prominent anthologies and literary journals like contemporary Indian literary by Sahitya Academy. Your novel Wow 24 Gante has been published in Hindi by Penguin Publications. Some of your famous stories in English have been compiled in the book If a River. You have 23 short story collections, one collection of essays and a novel published to your credit. You have written a major national newspapers including ours on different issues you are highly acclaimed dramatist with five plays to your credit and has scripted directed to television films also how this passion for writing started for you oh this is a very long thing you know a long journey with me because uh, i started writing in uh, schools only in fact the first poet poem of mine was uh, broadcast by all india radio guwahati station long back when i was in school so i got uh, five five rupees as the honorarium you know i still remember getting five rupees that time was such a tremendous amount of moral boosting you know so i've been writing since then my short stories and poetry then when i was studying in delhi i was writing almost regularly to different journals you know so uh, today, uh, well, as you said, I have written a number of short stories and uh, people have uh, started liking it. And so I, I feel it's a huge sort of a reward, you know, when people, when the readers like it. So, and the drama genetics, I was involved, you know, when I passed out from MA Economics, the School of Economics. In Delhi University, with different people, we met. We formed a drama group, and we used to do plays and things like that. So uh, generally, all sorts of things. And uh, see, one thing I realized that if you write uh, and if you are open to the people to learn from them, that uh, perhaps makes you more human in taking decisions. You know. You, you lot many times you 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 feel that in every issue in every situation there is a human being behind it you know so that keeps you going in the sense that 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 tells you okay look you can go you can go beyond you cannot go beyond this right there's a human being behind it so all sorts of things would come and we'll talk about it in uh, you know in course of time uh, but writing has been my passion since then and uh, though I was I started my writing first as a poet but when people started demanding more of short stories I've been writing mostly short stories uh, uh, of late and uh, 
So it's good. I like it. Let's uh, talk about your IPS, uh, some significant uh, initiatives taken by you during your IPS days. Mm -hmm. As a police head of Gothi State, you have introduced, uh, perhaps in not wrong, 1996. Mm -hmm. A model of community policing through the formation of people committees termed as a Nagariks Samitis. Can you explain the model of community policing then? Okay, it was like this. You see, when I joined as a police chief in Guwahati city in 1996, and uh, I generally found that, you know, that is my impression. I thought that it uh, that, that uh, we have to reach out to the citizen to work in a, a city like Guwahati, which is culturally so active, literally, and you know even there are a lot of uh, criminal cases. Then the, the scourge of terrorism in certain areas within Guwahati and things like that. So I realized that until unless the people are with you, you cannot really function as a law enforcer well. I, that was my belief. And in fact, uh, I, I uh, immediately realized that to take them along, we must have some sort of arrangement where they also take, uh, you know, um, uh, they also become an important stakeholder in the whole decision making process. Like, you know, whether we when we make some uh, VIP area law and order arrangement, uh, say, for example, and um, you know some bandubast law and other bandubast during the time of big festivals you know so the, the these people can be of great help and we have to take their you know suggestions and you know counsel and counsels etc so now through this i had formed uh, these committees uh, to give a platform so the different stakeholders even from Thalawala to Pionoven office to the vice chancellor of, uh, of universe officials all came together you know in that body you know around a few people were selected from different areas who have the you know uh, on this type of thing so different uh, colonies we have such type of arrangement that worked wonderfully in fact uh, Almost all the police stations started having this now. Uh, in uh, I think four or five years back, uh, the then DGP realized that you know they they found a good size job and it was made at a whole state level project. Now every police station has a citizens committee or nagrik committees, you know, in Assam. Every police station. So this is something which is really helpful having a liaison with the people it's a collaborative effort with the people you know okay, like okay, that. okay. you are one of the projects called uh, project prahari it is a community development and policing project got uh, many accolades and appreciations you started this uh, to fight against the social prejudices economic isolation military in remote tribal villages how was the response to this initiative? Was there any change of social behavior from these people? Okay, good. See, uh, in 90, in 2000 to 2001, I was with, in that Fulbright scholarship, as I said, uh, in US. Then I came back in 2001 or July or something like June, July like that. So I um, that time I just landed from Washington to you know uh, Guwahati. Then I was given an order to go to uh, Kukrajhar area, which is a tribal area, basically in few districts. A lot of tribals are there, and it's that time it was not a very uh, important.
Dear friends, uh, till our uh, guest come back, I just want to highlight that Chai Pe Charcha is an interactive program with the bureaucrats and high achievers. I think our um, guest has come back. Sir, we are talking about uh, mm -hmm. your project uh, in uh, during IPS Prahari. days. Prahari, yes. Yeah, so I was basically, uh, when I was posted to Kukrajhar, it's a wonderful place, very naturally uh, green and things like that. Uh, mostly tribal people in villages and things. Now, uh, I found in the district and in that range, I was a deputy inspector general in, a, in that particular range, West Assam. So uh, there I found that, you know, a lot of cases were happening uh, uh, which uh, did not go uh, through very good investigation because of, uh, you know, generally people uh, did not take it seriously. So I was looking at it, what is the issue? I found that there are certain cases which involved basically the, the genre, social prejudices, which really is uh, very important for us because it, this is a social crime where we really uh, have to uh, play a very important role. That is how I was uh, thinking of this particular project where I brought in all the stakeholders like uh, student bodies. Can you hear me, Radha Krishnan? Is it okay? Yes, yes. Hello. Please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. We are hearing. Yes. Okay. No, there are some, uh, say all the students' bodies, then science clubs, then women body, women committees and things like that, all came together with us, uh, taking the local police as the change agent, the one I was talking about, you know, that uh, how can we bring change in such situation where a uh, lot of crimes are taking place because of social prejudices. What are these social prejudices? This is about uh, the atrocities in the name of, uh, you know, witchcraft, you know, very black magic and things like that. So uh, I took, I found that we have to make this women power as the prime mover in such occasion. So the women were taken as uh, important uh, stakeholder in the whole program. And we started uh, visiting a lot of villages, bringing awareness against witchcraft black magic so that you know uh, the people are uh, basically the inhuman torture and the trauma they get out of this were coming down and in fact uh, till i was till uh, say i came out of it around 100 villages came under that and uh, then after that you know a lot of awareness came up you know all over the state the media, they became very aware that this such a crime has to be reported, has to be brought to the uh, people uh, so that they know about it and they fight about it. Then the non-governmental organizations, they do come to help uh, the police. They also were, went for social uh, awareness. So this is making a huge impact on the um, social prejudices like witchcraft killing and torture like that, you know, and how to rehabilitate such women who have been Highlights the journey into the professional life and dislikes uh, in their career and uh, from their contribution to our society and national building. Sir, welcome back to you. We were talking about your project. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hi. Okay. When the project started picking up, all right. Uh, it, it it spread to different uh, areas and the people on their own, they started coming out and start uh, contacting the local police, said that, look, we want to be uh, in this project, please help us. So just one uh, one example I'll give. So uh, there, is a, uh, there is a river, small river, where the 
people, uh, the bridge was not there. So people came out and they said, they requested that the police that be there with us, we'll build a bridge ourselves so that we can attend the school beyond that thing, right? That was a basic idea about this project was, you know, how to motivate, how to transform the, and the community energy to something meaningful and creative rather than using those energy in killing somebody or in you know traumatizing some people by falsely uh, blaming them as witches you know there are a lot of pop, um, property related issues in that a lot of uh, you know blind faith in black magic and things like that all sorts of things were tackled with this project you know that is why probably if you uh, later on uh, when it was made a case study how how uh, you know look uh, police people made a dent on in changing the scenario of those areas there's a good uh, project report on my this uh, effort by INSEAD that Singapore Institute you know that Institute of Management INSEAD Governments. and that uh, case studies you know, anybody who is attending today and find in the Harvard Business Review, their case uh, repositories. So I think uh, it was a wonderful feeling that I could make some change to the life and living of uh, some people. So just as a senior uh, IPS officer held prime positions in India, mm -hmm. the corona crisis that what the whole world facing it is highlighted some minus points that negativity that we have we are trying to overcome that and the systems the resources that we have today in policy let's understand from the policing point of view you may require command and control center so, so, every police station you may okay, require that, call center in the location do you think that the time has come for police system to adopt newer newer processes, newer things driven by technology, at the same time, create a, a, a long-term resources for the benefit of the people of the local. I mean, what is your suggestion? Okay, uh, you know, we all understand that COVID uh, situations all over the world have really uh, made us rethink and revisit, you know, lot of areas for the civil servants activities and things like that because uh, earlier um, people might not have thought that police can be a, such a big uh, uh, help to the society in times of even pandemic you know Absolutely. where the most prominent role is to be played by sure. the doctors and frontline workers right but people of late people have realized that police in last one, one year Year, how they have been working day and uh, not only in crime control but as well as to to manage certain uh, apparently small issues but having a lot of impacts in the society say for example wearing mask and you know uh, keeping a social distance you know implementing the decision of the government in times of lockdown and things like that so police has been playing a very very important role and uh, of late everybody is realizing that the domain for policing has really increased and uh, keeping such things in mind as you said we might uh, uh, already we have command and control system in terms of um, policing in those areas how police can help them how police can uh, arrange for the ambulance and all sorts of things we uh, really feel that uh, it is uh, required and it is working that way only but uh, there is one very important point also that we have seen that number of policemen who are on duty have fallen, uh, you know, uh, victim to this particular uh, uh, this. Now, the uh, I, I feel that uh, you know the policemen on the street and the officials all have to be very careful because a lot of money, not only a lot of money is spent in in making a police you know properly train that but the society uh, is so dependent now on a policeman so they should because a policeman is is a local level leader 
you know policeman is a local level leader he he is he how he behaves whether he is wearing a mask where you know all sorts of things are being noticed by the people around him he's an uh, so i feel a policeman also has to behave in a scientific way so that people around him do learn and imitate him right so these are certain issues not only the machine getting a machine but the man is also important the how policeman in the street uh, behave and uh, display themselves you know that how how they showcase themselves for the people you know at the time of pandemics sir introduce me your family to us to our viewers uh <laughs> okay okay i i have uh, uh, we are three actually in the family myself um uh, my son aren naksaikya uh and my wife uh, lena sharma so lena sharma is a member uh, she is from indian railway service irts so she is now member railway claims tribunal gauhati member gauhati bench right here and uh, my son has joined in uh, uh in an administrative service ias he just joined uh, last year and before that for a few months he was in indian police service at uh, karnataka was his cadre but ias he's got uh, some cadre he, so he is also back and having some training in gauhati uh, staff college nice i was telling him uh, and we have been writing articles in your play paper together right father son duo so i i i do not know if he could make time from that classroom and all he was having training arena uh, can you hello yeah so i I'll, welcome I'll, I'll, i welcome saryang sekia ips to join the show and uh, uh, let's have a few words with him also Hi, Mr. Arjun. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really. I'm doing fine. I'm undergoing some training here. Okay. Uh, in the in in Guwahati itself, uh, okay. related to survey and settlement because apparently land revenue administration is our bread and butter. Okay. So, okay. How is your early days of IPS training? Ah, uh, it it was a really. Uh, very it's a memorable experience i mean if you initially when we went we went with a lot of expectations and then on the first day itself we were meant to run 5 kilometers then it gradually increased to 10 16 and so on and after a point we started cribbing we started crying that well, where are we going to this is hell you have to get up at 4:30 in the morning and at 7 in the evening you get free but then over time it has been such a um, enriching um, learning experience for me because it gave me a lot of confidence to climb ropes to climb all those things in handling all those weapons at the same time learning a lot of law and uh, uh, forensics and for um, investigation as well so it was a really good experience what is the best moment uh, during your uh, lal bahadur sastri academy days uh i mean it, i think the trek we had a himalayan trek uh, to 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 the to the nearby himalayas because it's perched in the himalayas now it's basically the garhwal himalayas so the trek was of around 7 days we were divided into multiple teams and it was a really you know it, to be within within those beautiful mountains and then the trek gets very treacherous as we go along and some of us actually fell some of us fell ill we were uh, not actually we were not told that we would be going to an area where the temperature at night actually drops to minus 10 minus 12 degrees and our tents and everything were not equipped for it so at night we would never be able to sleep and so we would keep on like thinking when will this trek get over but once we came out of the trek once we finished it after 7 days we felt so confident and we we felt that maybe we can do this again i mean the memories that we have there i think will never be erased kulada sir what is the one suggestion you give it to your son always <laughs> no nowadays i take his suggestion you know 
because uh, you know this this generation of people are more knowledgeable than me nowadays but we do keep talking about all things i only told him whichever service you are in is not very relevant very relevant what, what is really more relevant is how to remain as a good human being you know whichever service you are you have to remain as a human being you know and uh, you have to reach out to the people and uh, people have to trust you you know the question of trust is very important in any service so my idea is that he should uh, uh, you know feel that he is been trusted by people sure people those who Can love you, you and your yeah yeah those who love you are proud of uh, your contributions to the society and nation i uh, congratulate um, staryank saikya and uh, and all the best to your ips and i'm sure you are going to join the the regular course of uh, assignments very soon all the best to you mr aryan thank you for joining the show today thank you sir thank you it was a pleasure being here and i hope to interact more with you in the near future so thank you so much thank you thank you so back to you, sir you are mm -hmm. currently a member in both academic executive boards of cultural university majuli assam apart from being an adjunct professor in cotton university you are also invited as a visiting speaker to speak various topics and also you visit number of prominent institutions both in india and abroad in seed singapore and uh, you also we discussed about uh, you frequently visit iims triple it's iims iits and uh, you are also member in the board of directors in assam electronic development corporation and in the rural technology application group in iit guwahati you have recently been elected to the prestigious post of president of assam sahitya sabha a century old uh, literary body uh, of the state and you are currently holding the post how your association with this uh, sahitya sabha is uh, uh, is making you busy and uh, you are in your know, interest is contributions well the assam sahitya sabha is uh, one of the oldest uh, literary organization in the world actually it was uh, established in 1917 then um, it has been there almost uh, more than 104 years now and uh, it is uh, you know all the literary luminaries of assam have uh, been associated with this and basically this particular organization is non governmental it has no uh, link with the government it's absolutely the people uh, people's organization and and the president of the organization has been elected actually they, uh, we have around more than uh, 1500 or so uh, units in different districts and they elect a person uh, for this uh, to chair the organization is it okay are you hearing me radha krishna yes 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 please go ahead or disconnect no no we are we are online okay. we are online so okay now um, then uh, if you remember dr bhupen hazarika that uh, famous singer and composer he was once uh, chairing the you know this organization i'm sitting in his chair today i feel so proud of it you know okay. so uh, first time a, first time a retired dgp has got this chance you know uh, to be sitting in this particular chair and this organization has been connected and involved in all sorts of issues cropping up in the society even in literary do it is a literary body as such but uh, it does look after the culture it does look after the you know daily life and living all sorts of issues things like that so basically uh, i have taken up some new Uh, sort of visions for this organization how to reach out to the people and how we can have a bridge of friendship between okay. uh, smaller nationalities and ethnic groups in this area okay. so okay. it's uh, it's uh, doing wonderful mm -hmm. okay 
what was the message you given to mr sonawala on the counting day of the elections in assam sir message your to ex -boss, who your friend your chief minister <laughs> sir sonawala mr sonawala yes yes okay you was uh, he's been chief minister of the state and uh, I worked as a DZP under him. So best wishes to everyone in the government to do well. I mean, they have come back again. So I feel that they should understand what the people want, what they should be doing, you know, particularly how uh, the, you know, the identities of smaller communities, how Asmis can be used as a connecting language you know, uh, or amongst all of these, because this has been used as a connected language and we, until unless the government also plays a very important role. Uh, you know, what I have been saying, the, in a, when I was attending the, as, when I was attending London Book Fair as a speaker, I talked about why in the world, the languages of the smaller groups of people, smaller nationalities are so important because every day, every year a lot of uh, uh, people are losing their language the language it's called linguicide the language has mm, it's a, uh, you know uh, the, like homicide the language has been killed because there are very few speakers and the big language is taking care of uh, filling that space you know so i was suggesting that in the world over everybody should play an important role so that the smaller nationalities smaller languages thrive and develop and evolve because when a language dies my contention is if a language dies then along with it the uh, indigenous knowledge that flows in the words of mouth really is killed that means you lose the whole trove of indigenous knowledge the storehouse of indigenous knowledge is finished it's gone along with the death of a language so allow for everybody's evolution, allow for everybody's development, so that your own language also become uh, more resourceful. Say if a lot of tribal words are in Asmish language, so if those tribal languages are developed, say our own language, the Asmish language will also develop. So this is this can be seen in all India level as well, you know. So my suggestion is that, and through uh, Saita Sabha's new effort, I'm trying to digitize our old literature, bringing in technology into the under year old organization. That is one. Then secondly, one very important thing I would like to talk to others also about it, that how certain uh, our um, traditional tools of education, like storytelling, you know, how it is important uh, even today for giving moralities, uh, giving uh, new uh, knowledge to the students and all at the early age. So we have reintroduced storytelling in our society again by through small small groups, through internet and things like that, right? Then to make um, some research book available so that, you know, everybody can feel that some good work has been done. So a lot of other actions I have taken up, but these are important issues. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh any interest of yours in politics as a next step? <laughs> uh, not really. I haven't thought about it because uh, I, I can. Uh, my tenure in Assam Sahitya Sabha presidentship is uh, till the next uh, February. So uh, till then, I'm very involved in this particular organization. Every day, I have around three, four meetings all around the state. There is hardly any time to think about it. In fact. After joining this organization, there is hardly any time for me to write, uh, you know, my own things. So very, uh, you know, at your insistence, at your request, myself and Aren are tying up together to write a few articles in Economic Times. You have been writing like that. So it's a very engrossing job in this particular um, assignment. So if Next, I may later on sometime. If I may ask you, what are the main key three issues of Assam for the development is concerned, which you would like to perhaps appeal to the Chief Minister of Assam, whoever it, he may be tomorrow, 
Hmm. If you can hmm. highlight those three appeals. Okay, I I feel that look, the first thing is that, that every year for last several decades and all, still you remember that the mighty Brahmaputra, you know, has been uh, having a lot of flood and erosions. You know, village after village are being uh, disturbed by this erosion. You know, a lot of land has gone into it, school buildings, houses, and things like. That. So I feel the new government uh, must put up a very, very concrete time-bound plan how to tame the river. Uh, this is very number one. Okay. And, uh, connected with it, connected with it is okay. your okay. Uh, earthquake prone areas. The you know they have to see about the river dams and all sorts of things. So that is one thing. Then second is. See, uh, as in the first question, you said a lot of guys, a lot of students, a lot of people are going out in search of job, even 80 jobs, you know, around 5,000, 7,000 and all. They are our big resources in the state, you know. Um, those people be properly streamlined because a lot of them have come back during the last, you know, uh, pandemic uh, lockdown. So the next step would be how to uh, effectively and um, re uh, effectively did these people in their in their job and skills they have acquired being outside the state for the last several years that has to be done thirdly a good education and health you know these three not in terms of priority but in terms of requirement um, i think the first priority is about the health and education these two are very important because the local uh, the you know, the ASMIS medium or our local medium schools are in very bad situation in the infrastructure and things like that. Not new economic, new education policy talks about educating students in their mother language to certain class. So to, to make it available, to make it accessible, the government has to think how education can be made available to all in proper format, like, you know, proper uh, infrastructure and facilities. That has to be ensured, and the health. Health, you are, we all know how um, uh, the number one priority now. So that has to be thought about, and you know, to 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 make it accessible, more accessible to the people in rural areas, even urban areas, slum areas, and things like that. It becomes more inclusive and available to uh, the services available to everyone. You know these three things i can flag it now as an education <laughs> lover as an education follower any suggestion to the parents who want to make their children proud of assam and uh, pursuing <clears throat> especially to psc see one thing is very clear you know like uh, you know um, uh, there is a debate between you know the uh, what medium of instruction you will take whether in SMEs or in English you will take the education. There is a big debate uh, in every state, I believe. So I feel that <clears throat> uh, there is not much uh, to be you know debated upon. And anybody whoever goes to which medium is immaterial because uh, a student. Today we'll go to a school where he gets the maximum, you know, opportunities in future. So we have to rebuild the schools which are of local language, so that they can at least every the learning in mother language is such a big thing. You know, it's everybody in the world has uh, said that it is uh, which has a contribution actually, which contributes to the cognitive development of the student at the early age. So mother language has to be very uh, important uh, issue. So that has to be uh, taken. But as I myself coming from very you know very small township school near local language and things like that to Delhi University and all this. Now, what I feel is the students must think one thing. They might take an exam in civil services. They may not. They may succeed. They may not. That doesn't mean much right all all professions are equally important you know whichever profession the person the student likes 
I, if, if he has a, a belief that he can do well, I think he should go in for that. Mm, uh, because uh, all the world has gone into so much of competition now. So my point is, do not uh, have a binary type of a choice. Say, either I go to technical, like, you know, uh, engineer, doctor, like that, or I, I, I just sit tight, I can't do anything about it. Not like that. You have a not a, you the, take the life as a beyond black and white choice system, you know, that you know there is a very important gray area where also you can have a lot of opportunities and uh, beauties in the life so my point is uh, you, you please everybody should think in that terms and the parents are the biggest teacher for a student uh, for their own uh, you know children because how they behave what principles what policies they take in their own life, that the, the child can see it at the, at the, in the home, right? He will follow that only. Absolutely. My point Absolutely. is, Absolutely. Hmm, he's, uh, the, the, the parents should be careful enough to, uh, to give him the type of look and, you know, um, everything, policies and uh, and teaching, everything should be in that line that look, Whatever I want my son to be, I should also be like that. At least he feels that I'm a man of principle, honesty, truthful, and I am a person who can be trusted. You know, such type of things I think will bring a lot of motivation and uh, strength to their children. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, dear viewers, hope you enjoyed today's our uh, guest, Mr. Kuladar Sekia. As you know that Chai Pe Chacha is an interactive program with the bureaucrats and high achievers in diverse fields. This high impact live video show highlights the journey into professional life, likes and dislikes in their career, apart from their contribution towards our society and national building. Each week we present a new guest and discuss in topics that matter. We'll soon come back with another guest for next week, Friday, 4 p.m. Until then, thank you very much. I sincerely thank, thank you, Kunadar Sakya, for joining the show and making us very interesting topics. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.